Hello ladies, gentlemen, welcome to the Star Ladder Invitational. I'm Gods and joining me is going to be Scant. We've got a couple days here of European qualifiers for the upcoming Star Ladder Invitational in Kiev in April. Uh, one team going to be coming out of Europe uh, to represent, I guess, well, the European region. And they'll be joining the invited teams, which currently is Alliance, Vici Gaming, LGD, as well as MVP Phoenix. Uh, and the Chinese qualifier team, which is uh, now confirmed it's going to be Vici Gaming Reborn. But we've got European qualifier action here. Avengers taking on Fantastic Five in our first game of the day. Scant, how are you doing, friend? Sick, but happy to see the new European teams playing. And I just wanted to know, do you know, are there any of the like established tier one teams in this qualifier, or is it all kind of new teams and one of them's going to make it through? Uh, there's a couple of the established teams, more like the CIS ones, uh, looking at like Vega Squadron. Um, let me quickly pop up the list here so I can not be just spewing random speculations. I think uh, Virtus, no, Virtus Pro are not in the qualifier. So uh, Team Spirit, Vega are probably the bigger names in this qualifier. Uh, then you have Team Empire there, but again, a lot of these are, are newer teams, so I wouldn't really consider any of the teams like the top tier one teams. Vega probably being the, the most well-known one. So those are absolutely teams that could be displaced by these new teams. That, that's kind of what I was getting at. The same way we saw Team Spirits in the previous season, just like qualify for the major, qualify for all the lands, and they had kind of just formed their CIS rejects, became Team Spirits. I feel like any of these new teams could have that kind of run in this season, and this, this could be a good start in this tournament because they don't have to face in the qualifier any of the you know, really, truly scary, you you expect very uphill battle kind of teams. So it'll be interesting to see how they develop. Um, I'm I'm always happy to see Boogie teams. I've been a fan of Boogie for a long time. He's not he's not like a, the most high profile European player, but he's, you know, one of those high MMR players. He's been around forever. He's not new at all. I remember like right at the beginning of Dota 2, I was actually playing some European NLS leagues back when, <laughs> back when it wasn't that hard to get involved and he was already playing then. So. Like, definitely a, f a fixture of the European sort of tier 2 1.5 scene, and I'm always rooting for him because I think he's one of the better attitude um, European players are on. Yeah, he's been on, like you say, some tier like 1.5 teams that have seen a decent amount of success. So we'll see him, what he can do here, captaining and drafting for the Avengers, which I think aptly named because they're perhaps looking to take down some of those big name teams which they've been removed from at various times, whatever it may be. Uh, you've got Black, you've got Shaq, who's kind of a new player to the competitive scene, or uh, not going by the name Shaq anymore, he's going by the name uh, MG. Uh, Yonison Fan, who was kind of the guy left behind when two of his teammates went over and joined Complexity, so uh, interesting to see how they're going to do. And they're taking on Fantastic Five, so to talk about this team, we've got Yol633, or BZZ, RMN, who's a Russian-speaking German player, we've got Havost, and then Ghostic, so this is kind of a bit of a mismatch of teams and players from different CIS teams. Uh, the old kind of Rock's Kiss team with BZZ, Yol, and Ghostic. You've got Havos leaving Empire, and you've got RMN who was playing with uh, Power Rangers before uh, coming over to make the Fantastic Five. What do you make of a, a lineup like this, Scan? I mean, they had a, the, I think there was a similar stack with Yol and BZZ and Ghostic, which had a pretty good run. I think they were also playing under Fantastic Five back then in the previous season. And I can't remember exactly who the other two players were at that time. But there was a stage, I don't know if you remember, there was a stage in the previous season where we had kind of like so many strong CIS teams that might be breaking through and Team Spirit ended up being the main one doing it, but I believe Fantastic Five were one of the ones and that, that almost did and I think we were watching Elements later, which is also another team that like almost made that breakthrough and I don't. I feel like for a team that's almost making a breakthrough, add a player like Havos to your lineup and you know, he's he's definitely a player that's come under a lot of criticism recently. People say he's not the player he used to be, like, oh, how the mighty have fallen. But at the same time, in terms of, like, mentality and having that sort of, I believe I can be the best, we can be a winning team, I, do, I, I think he absolutely brings that to a team. And it could be something that, like, kind of pushes them over into actually making a dance in the scene. Yeah. And even just to the extent, like, I mean, his individual play, I think, speaks for itself. And I think he's more than qualified to be on a team like this. And he's like, you look at this guy, and you're like, yeah, we've got a Vossan team. It's a great carry play to have. But he's a veteran. He's ex experienced. Like, he's the kind of guy you want to have sitting next to you when you're at a land turn, or even when you're playing, like, a big clutch match, because he delivers good performances when it matters. I think that's one of the best things to say about Havos is that, yeah, he can be hit or miss, but in clutch matches, he has been one of the most impressive carry players out there. Unlike some players who maybe, you'd maybe rate like a level slightly above him, but some of these players like, I don't know, Illidan, for example, or Silent, none of these players necessarily have the same land results or clutch performances that Havost has. 
Yeah, yeah. Different kind of credentials all around. And I think the only two players we didn't really talk about is uh, RMN and Solitude. And RMN's, I think everyone kind of knows RMN because he's been standing in for top teams for like since Dota 1, yeah. even not not just Dota 2. I mean, he's been in some set teams himself, but I almost think of him more as a stand in. So it's interesting to see when he, when he does, you know, lock himself down to a team. And Solitude, I believe, is one of these. We expect him to get 8k very soon, MMR, hotshots. I, I think he's like 7.8 or something, and he's someone there's been a bit of buzz about recently. So, actually, all the all the players in, in this match from both teams have some kind of, you know, important credentials coming in. I think to talk about Solitude, you also have to talk about Black, because this puts Black onto the support role. That is, to me, the biggest story of Team Avengers right now, is how does a player like Black handle the support role having played carry slash core roles like i think he went through like maybe a bit of a mid phase for a while but mostly carry for as long as i can remember yeah and black's always the thing with black has always been that burning was his idol and he studied burning's play and looked up to him i mean there, actually there was a stage where burning himself played support back in the day so i don't know maybe he needs to go further back into burning's career and study that i think i saw a tweet by black sometime this week saying while support's much more difficult than it used to be, so um, I, I guess he's been practicing, I don't know, in scrims or in pubs or something, but I'm, I'm pretty sure he had some kind of tweets about how uh, the role is actually much more complicated yeah. and difficult than he remembers it. And it's funny because he's one of the players who, as far as his carry play goes, he's probably received, like, at the same time, some of the most praise of any carry play, but also some of the most criticism because of just his play style as a carry. So I wonder, like, what is, like, his team making the decision to bring in someone new and young for the carry role. It's much easier, I feel, to put, like, new young players on, like, a core role, like a mid or a carry, and have the more experienced veterans who kind of understand the game on those support roles. Yeah, I, I totally, totally agree with that. I, I think it's very rare for you to see a team bring in, like, a, a new young high yeah. MMR titan on a support role. I, I think Sax is maybe like the only example we have of that, yeah. where there's been some kind of success with someone who's mostly playing supports and come in as sort of one of the new stars. Like, for, for the most part, it's it's pretty much always the, the flashier, like more central carry roles. All right, draft underway. Well, we haven't really been talking too much about it, but we're now partway through, partly because it's like completely new team who don't really know what to expect draft-wise, but... Uh, Fantastic Five, they've gone for a Nature's Prophet OD Lena. Nature's Prophet, one of the kind of big picks we saw come out of just Shanghai in pretty much every tournament over the last few months. It's been a staple topic for a while. And Avengers go Witch Doctor, Beastmaster, Death Prophet, and Spirit Breaker. Um, anything unusual, anything that stands out to you, Scat? Um, Spirit Breaker, probably. <laughs> now that we finally start talking about the draft, there's a pick that comes out that really does stand out. It's, I think it's been a lot less popular of late. I think it's been a lot less successful of late, to be honest. Um, and uh, the Lena as well. The Lena has also been a lot less popular, and I, th I think that uh, was it. Blitz when we were at the major was talking about how the reason Lena has been less popular is because it was mostly run as a core, and you can't really run those heroes that don't have a way to to like escape or you know uh, disengage and go back in. And, and Lena kind of struggles with that. But it looks like, especially with a slaughter pickup, almost certainly going to be a, a support Lena in this game, and maybe you're going to gank into the OD's lane the way we've seen OD with the Astro into Arrow. You could be setting up for a Lena rotation as well. That's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, the, the Spirit Breaker, the first kind of unusual pick, but for the Fantastic Five side, Slada, I mean, that's coming out as a safe lane carry hero here, likely the Havos pick. And something when you've got the OD mid, you don't you kind of can go for that kind of Lotus style, more space creating uh, tempo controller for the safe lane. And it's going to be very kind of fast paced tempo coming out of Fantastic Five, I imagine, trying to get that fast blink dagger up on Slada. Yeah, it is. I think it is a hero that suits her most. I think it like fits the kind of playstyle he wants to go for. If the team can play themselves into a position where it's the right move for him to just be chasing after people and go, 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 like charging in. Because I mean, this is <laughs> there's been a lot of talk about you know CIS aggressive playstyle and how I, at least I feel like most of the top CIS teams have moved a bit away from that in the sense that they they turn on the aggression when they need to, but they don't need to be aggressive. But I, I think a burst is is maybe the one player in the scene who has never changed, in my opinion. Is, we've never seen that kind of streak of a Vost is now going to be the clinical stay back and farm. He's always been the player who wants to fight no matter what, and Slaughter definitely fits into into that category of player. Yeah. So Phantom Lance are the last pick for Avengers. I always see this and think like you're looking at a pretty elusive carry. Like you, This is pretty good against Slaughter, having the doppelganger to get rid of the amp damage and just fight around. the, the basically two stuns which can both be dodged in the Lena stun, the Slaughter stun, so... Uh, pretty hard to catch and kill hero uh, in the form of the PL. And something that also can pressure, like looking at a PL plus Witch Doctor lane with a roaming Spirit Breaker, this Nature's Prophet is not going to have an easy time in the early game. What's uh, really interesting about this also is that it's a 
it's a safe lane Phantom Lancer, which I want to say has been totally out of favor recently. Like, we've seen the mid Phantom Lancer come back recently in this patch. In the previous patch, safe lane Phantom Lancer was quite big, but I, I don't know that I've seen teams running safe lane Phantom Lancer in this patch much at all. I think I've seen recently Eternal Envy was trying it out in some, some pubs, but... Uh, you know, like, wh how do you even build the hero? Are you still going for the bottle? Do you go for lifesteal to farm the jungle? Do you rush the travels? Because I, I feel like it's it's not something that we've seen in this meta very much at all. Yep. And even, like, to the extent, like, how much you want to be, like, keeping in, joining fights with your team, are you going to fall behind? Like, you need to play more towards the late game because you've got a Death Prophet Beastmaster, so there's some element for Avengers where they want to group up, push down towers, take fights, and... Um, whether it's kind of whether the PL is going to be joining those fights or whether he's going to be looking to just to take the farm on his side of the map while his teammates push towers and create space for him. So th th this hero really is very versatile in that you can play aggressive with it. You can go for like a treads, drums, fighting build, or you can just play that more kind of carry farm role. Yeah, if you, I think if you look at the timings of like Beastmaster hitting Necros and DPLT, Spirit Breaker, I think that this Phantom Lance is like a be active early on pick and it's maybe it's there's an insurance plan that they've got the late game if they need it but i don't think they've picked it for the late game i, I think that would be surprising if you pick it with a dp and a bs muscle that it's that it's for the late game all righty well draft complete tusk the last pickup that's your kind of full position support here for fantastic five something with a bit of save i guess when you look at what the snowball can bring to the table but also that kind of kind of the counter puncher to the spirit breaker where you can roam around a bit early uh, try and keep tabs of the Spirit Breaker and just try and uh, create some kind of early game space for the, the mid matchup, the OD versus Death Prophet, which is going to be uh, important in the sense that you want, like, Death Prophet not a hero that can really afford to fall behind early in terms of farm. If your Death Prophet dies once or twice early on, you're going to be struggling. Yeah, so uh, I just want to check because it doesn't, this is not on a ticket, so the, the Dire team have sort of different nicknames. Do you know which person is which? Um... um I think anime is Shaq, I think. I can check quickly. I think I have black on my friends list, so I can... Well, actually, uh, let, me, let me go out to Steam and check that, but... Um, I'm not entirely sure which is which right now. I, I have a feeling that anime is Shaq and black is a nice mm. game, but then he's not actually playing support, then he's playing offlane. On the Beastmaster? Yeah, yeah. And, unless I've got them confused with each other. Um, um, quick of, uh, nice game is Yonison fan. So that is oh, offlane okay. Yonison fan, the role he's kind of been accustomed to playing. He's going to find a tree in here. Nice bit of gold if he can kill it in time, which uh, may be a bit of a challenge for him. He's going to chase that one down. But uh, let me quickly check. So Boogie is Witch Doctor, so Anime might be black. Who is this? Okay, so Anime is Shaq. Shaq is going to be playing the support, which puts black onto mid. Is he Death Prophet. Death so Prophet? he's actually... So okay. I guess they tried out support a bit, and he was like, this is actually really hard, yeah. let's let's not do that. <laughs> I've seen, I mean, Black has played a little bit of mid over, like, I think his team's, like, every now and then, just because of maybe what heroes they picked for him, uh, would put in mid and put someone else on the carry role. Um, he's not inexperienced at this lane, and a lot of teams have actually run more carry-oriented mids anyways, not to say that Death Prophet really fits that bill. Do you think... Um... I, there was a time not too long ago, maybe a year ago, where people considered Spirit Breaker to be quite a counter to Nature's Prophet. I, I sort of feel like Nature's Prophet players changed a lot recently, and partially because there was the, the Ags introduction, so you can like split push without even going to the lane, but but also because of the sort of MVP Phoenix style of Nature's Prophet where you're just fighting a lot. Like, do you th do you agree with me that uh, Spirit Breaker doesn't necessarily count to Nature's Prophet the way the hero's been played these days? Yeah, absolutely. I think, it's, if anything, like, Spirit Breaker does not fight well into that kind of style of play from Nature's Prophet. He doesn't, he doesn't, like a Nature's Prophet, you TP around, you're getting, not just pushing early, but you're getting aggressive, turning basically any fight in your favor by having a numbers advantage. And Spirit Break, if you're charging there, it's not like an instant appearance. You've got to charge halfway across the map sometimes. So um, I think, if anything, Spirit Break and not a hero you pick up as like a, oh, this will counter Nature's Prophet. Bottom lane, BZZ gets the banish onto Jonas. A stun will catch up one. The eye charge blocks it three, but looks like BZZ going to be the target here. Nice slider crash onto two. BZZ's got to run, has no salve here. Just the Tengos, and it looks like Avengers will secure bottom rune as well as top rune. PL and Death Prophet getting one apiece. I think uh, Fantastic Five probably thought that uh, Avengers were securing top rune. And I, I, I'm pretty sure the BZ thought if he astrals someone, his team can just catch up and it'll be a pick off. And as they go up the hill, they see, oh, actually, there's, yeah. there's lots of heroes there. And it's good play by Avengers recognizing that they can actually secure both runes. All right, well, we're going to 
unlock everybody and take off the overlay. There you go, guys. It's been a while. <laughs> I haven't done production in some time, but uh, here we go. So mid lane death prophet versus OD. Having the double bounty rune always going to be a good start for either team, and it's going to be the PL Witch Doctor taking on Nature's Prophet. A lane where you'd expect Nature's Prophet to get a decent amount of XP and farm. But it's bottom lane where some early aggression coming out. Jonas trying to do what he can here next to the that's Shaq on the Spirit Breaker. So now the sun coming out. Jonas gets caught by this one. Slider follows it up, and it's going to be nice shots. Not entirely blocking in Jonas, so it looks like he may narrowly escape. Another sun comes out. He does not get any regen off, and all right, man, that's first blood. Really nicely played. Yeah. In the meantime, the the Spirit Breaker had charged off in the mid lane. I think they're initially just to escape. And does force out the self from BZZ, so that's something for the lane. The Death Prophet's still going to have yeah. the the self, but and I, I don't think it's he's worth. He's the trade. bringing out like, another self, so <laughs> he's he's really worried about his early game laning stage. Yeah, and it's 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 definitely. I wouldn't say it's justified that you know you lose first blood, but you make the enemy mid use their self. Um, here's that gank we talked about in the mid lane with the Astro and Selena stun. I'm out, they're looking for uh, Death Prophet who has got level 1 of the Soul Siphon, so has a Fairy Fire Salve, should be able to survive this one unless another Lena Stun hits, I think Iron Man's got it actually, it's going to be close, Fairy Fire, doesn't go for it, perhaps a bit of a mistake there, I don't know if it would have saved his life, but he probably would have gotten at least experience and money for the first kill, maybe would have even been able to get his salve off and lived. Well, the Lena does go down, but um, again, I feel like it's definitely a favoured trade for for Fantastic Five and both yeah. times involving RMN playing quite well. I think it's something that we used to see when support leaners were more popular, that people can actually abuse the fact that this is a... I mean, it stuns you for almost two seconds, it has a seven second cooldown, so normally not happening in the mid lane, but in the side lanes when leaners involved in kills, you quite often do see a chase all the way up to the lane and get to the second stun. I, I, it's one of the shorter cooldown stuns in the game, actually, I think. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was the same thing at bottom lane, where the fact that he could get two stuns off got him the first blood on Beastmaster, and there in the mid lane you get two stuns consecutively off on the OD. Is there, I mean, is there a stun that has a shorter cooldown? Uh, I'm not sure if there is. I mean, not like a, a real stun, I feel. I'm trying to think what, what would what would be comparable, but I don't think so. Scotters is pretty short as well, but that's... 8 seconds? It's, yeah, yeah it's eight. one longer than Amina's, <laughs> so... They got both on the same team, it tells you what they're going for. Yep. Well, I mean, that's the thing, they're, they're going to hit this slider, to, slider blink dagger timing and just continually fight. Use that kind of great lockdown and control they have to take any clash and... Avengers will struggle to fight into that unless, like, Death Prophet already has some items. Uh, Beastmaster gets, like, a decent Necrobook timing up. Bottom lane, nice chance block, yo. Keeps Jonas in place and here comes Lena, gets the stun, slave off the Quill Boar. Gonna slow some of the down, but the Snowball on three kills off the boar. And now it looks like Jonas is going to go for the Suicide into Roche, but another stun coming out. There's that 7 second cooldown once again in action. Iron Man has been everywhere. His early game support played very impressive so far. Yeah, very good performance from him on the Lena. And especially considering the fact that like, Lena's a pick and even more so support Lena has just been totally out of this patch completely, yeah. I think. And just bringing it back in a big way this game. You've got plenty of setup. You've got Slata, you've got OD, you've got Tusk even to some extent. So really kind of enabling the support Lena pick. and. Looking at some of these other lanes, the offlane Prophet level three, doing just fine here. Like that's it's all it's going to take for Nature's Prophet is to like TP into one kind of mid-sized skirmish where he can just get a couple of kills for his team and transition to a tower, and that's what this hero is going to be made for. So you're not really expecting him to dominate his lane or anything. Around the time where he gets phase boots, he'll be more than ready to get active. Yeah, but so far, I've, I yeah, I feel like the, the the story of this early game is that the supports on the side, and especially, obviously, Armin's Lena, but the supports on the side of Fantastic Five are just getting much more done than the supports on the side of Avengers. Witch Doctor now comes to the mid lane just to stand behind and cover, oh. make sure that, you know, another kill doesn't happen without it. There is um, a kill coming his way, though, and this might be hard to counterplay because of the, the Tusk also getting involved. BZZ going to look to secure the top rune charge. Coming on through, but BZZ has backup in the form of a two-hero smoke. The car's going to bounce around nicely played, but the snowball will somewhat disjoin it. Brings in the OD as well, and there's the Nature's Prophet. Ghostic TP's in, will bring down Black, secures the rune. This charge has to be cancelled, and... This is the problem with the Spirit Breaker. You charge in, you think, oh yeah, we've got this one hero coming, but it takes some time. It's not instant. Nature's Prophet, TP in, he's instantly there, he's ready to fight. Yeah, and on top of that, I feel like all of the charges this game so far have been reactive charges. Like, oh, if something's happening, I'll charge in. And Spirit Breaker in the early game, I think you really want to be positioned where you're starting off a play, 
Um, and it, yeah, it plays into exactly what you're saying. It takes you so long to get there that you can't actually count on the fact that you're gonna be starting off the player by the time you do get there. Early high ground ward in this mid lane gonna make life even more difficult for Black, and it looks like more aggression coming out. This is gonna be spotted by a hawk. It looks like Iron Man just gonna take out that hawk and reveal his position, realizing that the gig's somewhat up here for him and. He's totally okay with that. I mean, Jonas has already been forced into the jungle. Something Beastmaster is great at doing with this Iron Talon, but he's sitting on Iron Talon Stout Shield. Has money for boots right now, but he's really struggling as far as the offlaners go. Mid lane, another Astral into stun. Ice chance to follow up. OD, not level 6 yet. It's not the ultimate, but the Snowball will catch two. One more OD right click. He's not going to get, but the Sprout comes in black. He's not going to get caught by that stun. Iron Man, his first missed stun of the game. A rare occurrence, but they'll still get the double kill here. Beastmaster's rotation. Possibly going to get a cleanup onto the Lena. Iron Man, Cool Boy's going to slow him down, and Beastmaster securing a much needed kill for himself. So the bottom river looks like BZZ going to escape and find himself a rune. Still yeah, very was, much favoring Fantastic Five. He was kind of stuck there, you know, he, he has to stun the boars or he has to save the stun for the charge. Probably not going to hit either, he's, he's probably dead either way. And, yeah, I agree with you, it's Fantastic Five are favored in pretty much every week. The only, the only really, truly good thing happening for Avengers in the early game is that their Phantom Lance is completely yeah. untouched. I mean, the same can be said for Slider, and yep, PL is the carry here, but Slider comes online faster, so... Like, I think Avengers still have to be scared of the fact Slider's gonna come up with a fast blink dagger and be ready to fight very early on, whereas PL it's like, yeah, he's farming, but it's not something you can use to counterplay the, the aggression. Yeah, I agree. And and that's this is the ultimate problem for Avengers, is their game is just starting too slow. We talked about their supports not being able to do as much early on. We talked about their offlaner not being able to do as much early on, and they're gonna try for a charge play onto this Nature's Prophet now, but I'm not too convinced about this. PL d deciding not to even try and dive it. Be very deep, and that's where you've got to worry about those TPs. Here comes Lena. Oh, they're going to catch out. Yep, they will. The stun hits. Shaq in a lot of trouble. Sprouted up. Does not have any way out of this one. And OD should be able to secure the kill for his team. Oh, nice cast. One more right click. Okay, OD says, let's just make sure we get this. Possibly not the best use of your your ultimate, but it's got a 160 second cooldown, but making sure they get the kill. Yeah, and I almost feel like that's a desperation charge, because that was like Nature's Prophet deep behind his tower, very difficult for Phantom Lancer to help with it, and I just think Spirit Breaker's getting frustrated, sensing, you know, not, I'm not able to do regular Spirit Breaker things, what am I supposed to do, I need to make some players, some things together. Yeah. Well, rotation towards bottom, scattered out by Beastmaster, who's trying to desperately get level 6 up. Speaking of that, Death Prophet not even level 6 in the mid lane, so full level behind the OD, and... We'll be hitting that soon. We'll have to see if Black goes for the Exism at level 6. I feel like he almost might need to go for the Exism just so they can try and make pressure onto towers as well as try and use it with the raw. If you're doing well in Death Prophet, sometimes you just skip it and go for like, getting lots of experience. Might get more points in the Spirit Siphon, but I don't know if he can get away with that. Yeah, we'll see in a few seconds. Looks like he's thinking about it. Um, <laughs> not yet committing to either. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I think I agree with you. They need some way of applying pressure to the game full stop. Like, maybe it's gonna be Beastmasters level 6 getting the reward and they, they go for some smoke rotations. There was a, a deep chase at the top lane, but no one actually ended up dying. Yeah, Solitude was, like, farming behind the T1 tower trying to set up with some lances for that kill, but... Again, the Spirit Breaker proving unsuccessful. Charge towards yeah, mid this time. Odie's is just a ridiculous hero against the charge, but this time he won't get off the banish. He's gonna find himself... Caught up by the Soul Siphon, he's gonna get up the Fairy Fight here, Nature's Prophet one goes through and the Snowball catches out two BCC, he's gonna be just fine. Black, he's gonna have to rely on the Exism to kind of fight and keep himself alive, it will deter any chase from Fantastic Five, and he gets one kill off of it, so a one for one trait so far, Ghost Stick, okay, gets away with the Phase Boots. So, does get a small little bounty with the Exorcism. Ultimately prevents follow-up kills from Fantastic Five, so definitely worth getting the point and using it there. But uh, I think the Avengers are in big trouble because the first Blink Tiger is, is very shortly going to be online. Yeah. Um, he needs about 500 gold and at that point I feel like what's, what's been in the case of Avengers struggling to get value out of lanes is going to it's gonna be in their face all the time. I think once the Slot has the Blink Tiger they're going to be forced to confront Fantastic Five over and over again and they could just collapse at that point if they're not able to turn around the momentum. Well, I'm going to find a D ward here at bottom but that also means Havos is not going to get ganked up. He's should be able to get that Blink Dagger timing just fine, but there is a Raw available, so all it's going to take is another TP in at bottom, and Havos could find himself in jeopardy, but 
Speaking of TPs in towards the mid lane, Witch Doctor goes trying to keep this Death Prophet alive. Cast bouncing around through two and this is he. He's gonna go down. Phantom Lance, a solitude with a rotation of his own, secures the kill. Looking for follow up kills is Avengers, but doesn't look like they can find any more vengeance in this mid lane and they'll find a new charge target. It's gonna be Yol in the top lane. Charge coming through PL, following this one up in the river, but he's still a little bit far away. The snowball will counterplay it in. Not just the fact that we talked about some of the oh, mid lane Iron Man gonna go down, there's the first roar of the game, but talk about, about the Spirit Breaker, not just the fact that this hero seems to have fallen out of favor, but he's into a lineup that has a lot of ways to cancel charge. Yeah, and, and a lot of ways to just counter initiates, you know, Astral defensively, Tusk can put things in the snowball. Um, Buran can TP in and Sprouts, so it's a difficult game for him, but as we see, the as the Beastmaster gets level 6, things ease up a little bit for them, and I will say that if you consider the fact that BZZ is actually 3 for 1 with 2 assists, there's been a lot of kills in his fa in his team's favor in his lane, I think he's actually a little bit behind, he's probably the one hero on, on the side of Fantastic Five that is a bit behind, his CS is quite far behind Blacks, and his net worth is also a little bit behind Blacks, even though his team has been so far ahead. Oh. We'll see what he can do to catch up. It's going to be probably the form of the Slider Havos smoking up with Iron Man, ready to get active now that the Blink Dagger's online. And yeah, it's definitely not been the most solid game coming out from BZZ. Like having to using the OD ultimate on the Spirit Breaker, then he didn't have it for the follow up fight where he could have killed a Death Prophet. So he's going to get charged now at mid. Slider not that close by, but a TP coming in from Tusk. Now the sprint over. Havos, Raver of Blink, Hero 2 stun! Catches out to the snowball catching too as well. Solitude, he's rotated in for this one, gets immediately caught by the Lingus and Laguna to follow this one up and it's clean up all day all long. OD Ultimate not gonna quite get the kill on anime, but the follow-up Link Sun from Havosh with the Lena Dragon Slave will secure it. Nice game. He's saying, please let me out of this one, but Jonas is not gonna find an escape. OD gets a triple kill onto Iron Man. And they got five. Havos chased down the Witch Doctor. That secured the fifth kill and complete clean-up mid with the Blink Dagger time from the boss. I wonder what Avengers were thinking, to be honest, because, I mean, this all starts with them charging in. They TP'd one and they charged in and they tried to go for a kill. And they have to know, firstly, Slada's gotta have Blink, or if they haven't seen it, he'll have it soon. They also have to know that Fantastic Five, on like, on their agenda right now, is protecting the OD, because OD is the one here on their team that sort of needs to get this OD farm, and maybe in some respect was, was struggling a bit, we were saying. So, for me, it's like the most obvious thing in the world that Fantastic Five are, are going to react in numbers if something happens at mid lane, and I just feel like Avengers, to some extent, walked into it. Mid, Avos, found another Blink Crush, gets the amp off, and Avos will secure the kill charge coming in, but this could just lead to his own death, and I don't know what Shaq's thinking. They get a sentry down, they see this Observer Ward, but they're also going to see Shaq get taken out, the Sprout going to catch up the follow-up, Boogie's getting caught, and just one by one, Avengers falling like dominoes. Is it going to be a fourth? Havos not going to get off a blink stun, the boar I believe on him, keeping that blink dagger while well, his own cooldown skill from the previous blink. And all Solitude can That's... do is offer a bit of split push. Uh, Havos has farmed a, a Midas, he got blink like three minutes, two or three minutes ago, less he did than yeah. He beats the top there. I'm not sure this is a fight he can necessarily win, or not a kill he can get with an Aegis Prophet ultimate, it's going to be close though, Solitude did not get caught by that one. Oh, that crash going to miss Havos. Bringing out some of his old plays, perhaps, but he's got the amp off and Solitude. Two points in the doppelganger has a fairly sizable cooldown here, and he's going to get the kill, so... Mavos perfectly controlled in the end. May have missed it stun, but he knew what he was doing. Gets off the Midas and will be back to base to heal before applying some more pressure on the map. Yeah, it's, it's good understanding, actually. Initially when he TP'd in, I was like, I'm not sure how Slaughter handles Phantom Lancer here, but... All he had to do is force out the doppelganger, recognizing it's probably not maxed out yet. It's going to have quite a long cooldown, and... Once the doppelganger is used, if Phantom Lancer stays around, he's he's always going to die. Yeah. That's where uh, PL's actually gone for this boots. Like, going back to that mid fight that was a team wipe. Like, PL had just picked up boots of travel. And one of the nice things about the boots of travel is that you can kind of have that nature's profit effect where you TP in and just turn the scales in your favor. And as a PL, you get a couple kills, you really snowball. But you're versing a team that's always going to have four or five there anywhere. And PL does not want to fight into like a 5v5 engagement. He wants to be like the in the 4v3 or have the numbers advantage. But that's just not going to happen against this Fantastic Five lineup. Yeah, and the set, I think you made a similar point earlier about the Spirit Break. It also doesn't really want to be charging into like the entire enemy team and kind of being forced to do that over and over in this game. So I think we are seeing the beginning of what I was worried might happen. Well, worried for Avengers anyway, that as soon as the Slalos Blink came online, um, Fantastic Five just decided, okay, well, we can just pressure them non-stop, force them to deal with us, and 
doesn't look like they are ready to do that dealing yet. It doesn't look like Avengers are in any position to to handle the aggression of Fantastic Five just yet. So I'm not sure what the best play is for them. Like ideally, they just want to split up Fantastic Five in some way. Maybe get the occasional pick off of the Smoke Gang with with the the Raw, and just get that farm into the Phantom Lancer. But I, I still feel like that that asks for quite a lot. Yeah, because you can't just avoid say okay they they're stronger in like team fight scenarios. They have all their items. They've hit their timing. You can't just say avoid fights because you're gonna get picked off. There's a Slider with a Blink Crush, there's a Nature's Prophet you can TP anywhere. So you've almost got to be aggressive even though you, you're like, even though you're in a like aggressive 5v5 scenario, you're going to struggle. They tried to smoke in, they nearly caught a Voss, but the Witch Doctor broke the smoke and actually, as the Voss blinks away, now there's a counter smoke coming from the other direction. Yeah, I believe that may have been spotted by the ward they planted too. Um, not entirely sure on that, but they're appearing to retreat down this bottom lane. Yeah, he throws off a Iron Talon immediately already on the, the back foot and doesn't look like Fantastic Five again kills off of this, but Lost is okay. Still sprinting oh, forward. Get around to black. Yeah, that's actually a big kill if they can get it. Oh, pings it out. Blink. Oh, amp damage off of Lost. Not gonna. Okay, nice silence there coming out from Black, but I don't think it's gonna save his life. Nope, not when he gets sprouted yet. Cast not gonna bounce around. Her Lost has gone in very deep. I feel like I've seen that one before, but it's done it with good reason, and it's already been three kills in Fantastic Five's favor. Nice defensive Astral. Coming out, and the charge will hit as it ends. The Nether Strike gets dealt with by the Lena Stun, and it's good game. 15 minutes in, nothing Avengers can do. They tap out, and I, I don't really blame them at this point. They're not gonna. There's no real good comeback for them, and they just decide to go game two. It's an interesting thing because for me, I, I think if you look at the draft, it's not that obvious that what's going to happen in this game is that Fantastic Five have a lot of plays they can make with their supports in the offlane early on, Avengers don't have any. It's, it's more like once we see the way Fantastic Five wanted to play it, how they're going to use their Lena very proactively early on from level 1 involved in all these kills, all of a sudden it becomes clearer and clearer that th I do think there is a bit of an outdraft with Fantastic Five playing the way that they did. Like It's difficult for the heroes that Avengers have for them to be as involved in the game early on and it just feels like the game you know, got ran away with before they could even participate. Yeah. If anything, the after Al draft feels more because of like some of these individual. Heroes. It's less about like how the draft comes together for Avengers, but more like some individual heroes like Spirit Breaker just not really being all that viable. Like they're very situational nowadays, and like this Spirit Breaker was almost like a negative impact on the team with what he brought to the table in some of these fights. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right, and especially if the enemy team supports are very active, involved, making plays, suddenly the Spirit Breaker looks, you know, less impressive because it's ne it's not finding those openings where you you and your mid isolate their mid, and it's two v one, and you make a kill. That's just like never happening in this game. All right, well, a very fast game one, guys. That's the uh, the debut showing for some of these new rosters, at least for Fantastic Five, and we'll see what Avengers can do to bounce back, or if it's going to be a quick two zero, where. Casting the Starlight Invitational, winner of this European qualifier, not this best of three. I'm uh, going to be going to Kiev to compete for, I believe it's $100,000 against some of the invited teams. But stay tuned, guys. Game two coming up after a quick break.